Hey I'm Photo Pips, welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time here, welcome. Now there's some exciting news that's been going off this last week and it's the launch of Luminar 4 by Skylum Software. Now there is absolutely hundreds of videos that are out there already explaining what Luminar 4 is and what it can do. So you probably know that by the time you've found this video. So I want to get straight in. Uh, the first thing I want to do is explain to you about going over to the, once you've downloaded it and you own it, get over to Skylum's page and download some of these amazing free, now there is some that you purchase, and there's some that you have to actually, uh, you could actually get for free. So you need to get on. I mean, you've got skies, you've got, um, so these skies are for the AI sky replacement where you just literally play, press a sky and download them if you want them, but you have to pay for them. Then we've got signature looks and we've got looks. Now looks are what give you that instant preset. Uh, these are free, the some are free. So just look through. The reason why they're free is because they are, from the Luminar 3, but they work also with Luminar 4. So have a good look through, uh, play with the slider, see what you think, uh, and as long as it says free, download it. But if you want to purchase the other ones, by all means purchase, but look into it first, just in case it's not really what you want. Don't, don't, don't throw your money away. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go into Luminar and I'm going to use it as a standalone program rather than a plugin. In Photoshop, I have it set as a plugin, but I just want to go in and use it rather than have to load up Photoshop because basically all I'm going to do is show you exactly what Luminar is doing. So the first thing you get is it, it opens up your um, much like Lightroom where your catalogs are, and here this is where we and all oh, the other quick thing is make sure you've got the latest update. How we do that, we just go to Luminar and check for updates, okay? And if you do that, it will just give you a quick check in for updates and it will tell you that the current version is the latest. If not, it will ask you, do you want to download the latest version? Just download it. So here is much like our Lightroom area where we can choose what we'd like to edit or look at. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab I want to grab that one because that's the one I've already done. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just going to grab this one, which is similar to the one that I've already done. And this is the raw, raw image, totally out of the camera. I love this picture and I love all the pictures from um, my Whitby trip. So if you've not seen them, check out the video. Um, but yeah, so this is where we get in. The first thing we open is our essentials which is the lighting, much like you change your highlights and shadows, this is what this will do. So this is much like where we would alter our shadows and our highlights in the AI enhanced slider. So we'll just open that and literally, rather than do uh, the two sliders, this will basically do them all for you, both of them. So I'm just gonna crank it right up. Uh, there, that's 100%. And I mean, it's looking absolutely brilliant. Do I want 100%? Yeah, I think I think I want about. I'm gonna go with 44 percent there, 45, 50, somewhere around there. Now the good thing about with the Mac and the trackpad is you just pinch to zoom, okay, and then just click and just push it over to where you want to go. Because what I want to do is I want to start looking at the way it can be broken down. Because I remember always if you go too far with clarity, if you use them three in uh, Lightroom or um, Adobe Camera Raw, what they tend to do is they start to break up the image itself. And with this Mac, I can basically zoom in. Where am I at? 3,000%. <laughs> this is the power of the Mac. I absolutely love it. So there I'm at 1,472%. Uh, and the image still looks all right, even though I'm at 50% on the... AI enhanced. As you can see, we've gone in so deep, we've got this color fringe in here. Not a problem because you never see it. And then we've got our sky. Well, we're not gonna really see the sky because I've zoomed out way too much. So there we go. That's gonna just take the sky down. It's giving me an evening. I think that's too blue. But what I can do is forget the sky. 
Let's just go to the AI structure. Now this is where it would be like clarity. And you know that I do enjoy using clarity because I don't tend to add any sharpening to my images until later. Did not ever use the Adobe Camera Raw sharpening system because it gave you with the Fuji, it gave you that weird, that weird like bacteria things if you zoomed into a microscope with the bacteria in the dish and that's what it was doing on the sharpening. Really, really did not like this at all. So this AI uh, structure, this is going to be much like the way I use Clarita. I'm just going to bring it up there. Now this is where you'd get, I don't know if you've ever noticed grey smudging around some of your images if you went too far. Well, let's have another look. Again, there is absolutely nothing there. Let's just let it load in. Now, it's not broken, it's not anything, there's nothing. And I'm at 2,724% zoomed in. Okie dokie, okie dokie. So I'm happy with that, but obviously there's something missing. And you know, the thing is with photography, a lot of the images that you take and love are probably when you're on your family holiday or maybe you've just got a day off work and you can't commit to going there every single day. And we get these images in our heads that what an image should look like but when you get there it's never what it is because you know this is the the nature of photographer the fact that you can go to a landscape one day and it be exactly how you want it or the next day it's totally raining with nothing or just gray sky or blue sky well now what i suggest is if you followed me for any length of time you know that i love to collect sky images i have a folder full of them well now these folders are going to be used I always use my own skies. I mean, this sky, it's nice, it's a lovely picture, but I just feel like it's missing something. And now I've looked at the camera and spoken for a while and looked back, I can see that this image now is way too overstructured. This is the other thing with editing images. You need to do a little bit, then come back. So at 25%, I've gone from 50% to 25%. So again, I've cut it another half. So I'm happy with all the other things I could go to detail enhance, but use them as you feel you need to use them. Have a play. For me, when I used to edit in Adobe Camera Raw, I'd basically just use the uh, shadows, the highlights, and the clarity. Then I'd open it on Photoshop and go back later, adding my my uh, LUTs, which it, it looks. But these are calling these looks L O O K S. So it's not L U T S. It's L O O ks but they are basically the same sort of thing right so now this is where our sky comes in so i'm going to go straight to the ai sky replacement i'm going to select a sky so i'm going to use my own custom skies and i'm just going to go in and take this sky and there it is there it is How frightening is that? Because what it's also done is it's actually changed the colour of the rest of the picture to sort of blend it in, if you like. In a way, I'm shocked because I used to spend hours and hours manipulating. Now, the check. Let's do the check. Let's zoom in. Now this, where am I? 700%, 1,200%. And you can just see a little tiny bit of blending. Am I, now it's gone. I've zoomed in that close. It's gone 2,360%. So I, I'd say 100% would be where you'd zoom into. Uh, it's 276%. How does that look? You guys tell me in the comments below. <laughs> right, so now when I actually did this image before in my own style, which is, I believe, up in the last video, if you take a look. Now, I mentioned in my Whitby video that there was repairing the boardwalk there on the top right hand side as we was looking back into Whitby from where I was standing. And as you can see, we've got all these partitions here. 
Now in Photoshop, it was the most easiest thing to do to get rid of these. I'm gonna see if I can do it in, in Luminar 4. So I need to go to the tool library. I'm gonna to go to the clone stamp tool because this is the tool that I would actually use inside of Photoshop to deal with a situation like this. So I'm just gonna use that clone stamp. Now in um, Photoshop, you would just use your option button. Uh, click to select a source. So I want to source that. Maybe source down a little bit more actually. It's absolutely perfect. It's exactly the same. Just make sure you're lined up properly. Do you know what? There it is. This is the frightening thing about these, the new technologies today in software, our other technologies being left behind. It looks like it is, to be fair. So after I've done that now, uh, there's another section here, look. So uh, again, I'm just gonna carry that on. I'm just gonna use the option button. I'm going to select a new section and I'm just gonna, just gonna go with it, look. Didn't like that, so I'm going to command Z that. Take another one. Remember, I've never used this program before, but it mirrors all the tools that we use and all the shortcuts that we use in other perfectly examples of Photoshop. So it's literally you're coming out of one, going into the other. This is amazing. I absolutely love it. Um, so now I'm done, so I'm just going to click the done button there. And that's going to take me back to the editing section where, do you know what? I love editing images and I love this even more. So now I've got to get my editing back wherever it is. Is it still loading it in? What's it doing? I'm still in tools. Here it is. A little bit slow. Not happy about that. I'm just going to take a drink. So now the next section is maybe looking at a little bit of a, a vignette or something like that that's going to aid me in, in leading you guys into the image. So we're going to go to the pro setting and I'm looking for, I'm going to use a graduate on this. So I'm just going to select the bottom on this one and I'm just going to make it darker by dragging the exposure tab back down there. Look, there it goes, look, look. Okay, and again, I'm just going to take the shadows out of that a little bit. I just want it to look a little sinister, which is a little bit too much. So what I need to do is I need to get in there with a, a brush and, and mask it out. So you just go to edit your mask, select your brush and come up here and we want to erase what we've done. So I'm just going to paint in here a little bit and take it away. I just didn't like it. It was a little bit too much. In fact, that's too much. So I'm just going to, hopefully that will go back. I don't know. It's a little bit slow. I'm going to take the opacity down to around 40% and I'm just going to take this out. I like the darkness there. I wanted it to feel that we was in some sort of, of dark section. There it goes. There it goes. That's better. That's much better. That's a lot better. Manipulate, manipulate it to your your liking, the way you like your image to look. Now you see this, this should be giving me some sort of shadow. So maybe then if I go down to 20% opacitor, leave that there and then just take this bit. Just give it a little, little lickies there look. <laughs> I love it. 
<laughs> absolutely love it. So this is just a quick run through how quickly we can edit our images using our creative imagination of the way we wanted this image to look when we took the photograph at the very start. I remember standing there knowing what I wanted this image to look like and uh, finally feel I've got it. Now, can I use this over Photoshop? I just have. I just have now. I'm really, really trying to think where Photoshop can do what this cannot. If we're getting it right in camera, where we need a tool as powerful as Photoshop, I don't think we will. And if you can't do it right in camera, you've got to be bloody good on these editing software suites, believe me, to get it right. So with that said and done, there's one thing really left to do on this, this, this editing side, and that's to export this image. So you just go to File, Export. Now there is shortcuts, um, but it's whether you need to do them shortcuts or not. So then what's going to happen is we're going to get a drop-down menu come down. We're just going to look at everything. The size is greyed out. It's telling me, do you want to do it in a JPEG at 85%? I want 100% quality. We're going to keep the size original, we're going to sharpen, we're not going to sharpen, it's sharp enough. But where am I going to put it and what am I going to call it? I'm going to keep it at the the default name, which is just its, its um, basic numbered image. But also I'm just going to put in here some of the, the tags. It's so easy. I'm just going to put Whitby in there. Okay, and I'll stick a purple colour on there. So anything now we want to come up to really quick there is going to be done. See, this is good, this is good. So I can go to my photos. And I can go to... <laughs> this is brilliant. And there's Whitby 2019, and I can save it. I need you to like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification because we're going to be doing a lot of these videos now. So with that said and done, guys, there's one thing left to do. That's get out and shoot. You know you want to. Take care. I'll see you soon.